the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita explains how Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent many of his eternal associates to incarnate in this world before himself to prepare the way. And how he did it is so instructive to all of us, especially in regard to Sri Adoita Charya. Adoita Charya, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami describes he is Adoita because he is Krishna himself. He is an expansion of Mahavishnu. As we know, Mahavishnu, by his will, the entire cosmic manifestation takes place. In each and every universe, Mahavishnu incarnates as Garbodakshaya Vishnu, as the super soul of the universe. And then Mahavishnu, through Garbodakshaya Vishnu, incarnates as Kshirodakshaya Vishnu to be the Paramatma within the heart of every living entity. This is Adoitacharya. He is non different than the Paramatma in our heart. He is non different than the creator of the entire cosmic manifestation. He's an expansion of Krishna. Therefore, his name is Adoita. Acharya is his name because he especially came to the world to propagate pure unalloyed devotional service to the Supreme Lord. It was on this day, the seventh day of the waxing moon of the month of Mag in the year 1434 that Adoita Charya appeared. His father was Kuvera Pandit and Mother Nabha Devi. It is said that he appeared in a village called Navagram. A particular time in his youth, he went on a pilgrimage. And it's described in our Shastras that when he was in Brindaban, he discovered the Madan Gopal or Madan Mohan deity under a tree that's still there, Advaitavat. And that became the Sambandha Murti of our whole Sampradaya. The deity that was discovered by Advaita was originally installed at the time a generation after Krishna by Vajranabha. And Advaita gave to his disciple and his disciple gave that more teacher, Srila Sanatana Goswami. Later on, Adwaita Chai was living in Shantipur. And it was in Shantipur that his profound, all encompassing compassion was revealed. He was the leader of the Brahmin community. He had everything. He had a wonderful wife, wonderful home in every way. But he was in great sadness thinking about the people who were suffering in this world. Srila Prabhupada describes that the nature of a Vaishnava is paradukha dukhi, that another person's happiness is our happiness and another person's suffering is our suffering. This is actually the nature of one who loves God. Advaitacharya personified this principle in such a way. He was literally crying to see his brothers and sisters in this world, in all species of life, bereft of love for Krishna. He saw that some people were suffering due to bad karma and some people were enjoying due to good karma, piety and impiety. 
but both conditions were suffering. And he saw people, philosophers and, and various transcendentalists trying to obliterate their suffering by becoming one with God. And he saw in all these situations that without love for Krishna, without devotional service to the Lord, there can be no true happiness. When one tastes love of Krishna, one truly feels compassion for those who are without love for Krishna. Srila Prabhupada often quoted Pandit Dasamadarshana. A great devotee sees everyone with equal vision and therefore feels for everyone and wants to give them that opportunity that is inherent within every soul to know and love Krishna. Adoitacharya, as we have explained, he's Mahavishnu. Vrindavan Das Thakur explains he's Sadashiva, the original Shiva who lives in Vaikuntha. He's the original Purusha or the creator of the whole cosmic manifestation. And yet he's feeling himself unqualified to give pure devotional service in the mood of the residence of Brindaban to the people of this world. Adhortyacharya was feeling so much transcendental suffering in his heart due to compassion. He was regularly giving classes in Shantipur from the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. But he believed only if Krishna directly from Goloka Vrindavan descends to this world can he spread the Yuga Dharma of the chanting of the holy names of the Lord in a way that people can receive that highest benediction of Vrindavan Bhakti. Sometimes Srila Prabhupada would explain that, that Krishna consciousness or bhakti yoga, the goal and the path to reach the goal are the same. <laughs> when Srila Prabhupada was asked, what will you get from chanting Hare Krishna? Prabhupada said, the goal of chanting Hare Krishna is chanting Hare Krishna. Now we are chanting to clean our hearts but when we actually attain purity, then we will chant an ecstatic love. And similarly, Jivara Swarupoy Krishna Nityadas, that we're eternal servants of Krishna. And the path of bhakti is we achieve our love in serving through serving. So Srila Prabhupada and all of our acharyas headed by Sri Adwaitacharya, their life personified this principle of compassion. The six Goswamis, they lived in compassion, not just to be in the holy dham and worship Krishna, but they were living in compassion in the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for the well-being of all of us. For the whole world, they were revealing Vrindavan and the treasures of bhakti. So, Mahajano Yenikata Sapanta, the path to know Krishna is to follow in the footsteps of the great souls. So, whatever level we're on, we, we follow four regulative principles, even though we may have desires to break them. <laughs> but we follow them because that's the path, whether we feel like it or not. And in a positive way, Srila Prabhupada asked us to distribute books, develop temples, create communities, 
the whole purpose of the Krishna consciousness movement in every aspect is to share bhakti with each other as a spiritual family and to make it accessible to the world. It's non different than our sadhana to express our gratitude to Srila Prabhupada and our acharyas by assisting them in their compassion. I may not feel any compassion, but if I want to serve my Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, then I try to act as an instrument of his compassion. And that is an inseparable part of how we make spiritual progress. Srila Prabhupada explained in Krishna consciousness, in giving we receive. And what pleases Krishna most when we're helping each other to love Krishna? If we examine the spirit of what seva or service means on a very external level, it means doing what we're supposed to do. But the spirit of service is that we're striving to achieve and that we're trying to apply to our lives is samsidir haditoshanam. We're engaging in those activities that please Krishna. And madbhakta pujabhyadika, there's nothing that pleases Krishna more than serving his devotees. And we are in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said he's a fruit seller and he has the fruits of love of God and he wants to share these fruits with everyone in every town and every village throughout creation. And he wants all of his devotees to help him to distribute these fruits. That's what pleases Lord Chaitanya. That's what pleases Srila Prabhupada. And that means to live as an instrument of compassion. And that's the compass in which we navigate the success of whatever we do. Is it pleasing Krishna? Is it assisting our Guru Maharaj, in his mission of compassion. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com.